What do you know about that basement? Well, let me think. Not then. Come on, Jake, for Christ's sake. I've come to get O'Leary several times, but they always make me wait in that dining room. One day it was so late that the restaurant was closed. They made me call from a payphone in that alley over there to let them know I was here. A few minutes later, O'Leary came out the back door. That red one there. All right, you stay by the payphone. Wait till I'm inside. If you see anyone, call the same number you did that one time. Let it, got it? Screw you! A promising night indeed. A bit too high to climb, if the basement I'm looking for were in that building. I'm guessing it lights up when they ring at the main door. Does he need a shotgun to deal with suppliers? Maybe it leads to the basement. Would he even notice if I got in? Something tells me he'd notice me no matter how stealthy I was. No. The plan will only work if O'Leary doesn't know I've been here. Could it be an elevator shaft? How does this thing open? If I'm right and this is a service elevator, it could be my gateway. If only I could reach that box. What happened? Should we run for it? Do I look like I'm in a hurry? I'm gonna take another look. Keep your eyes peeled. Are you done? What do you think? There's a guy watching TV inside the restaurant. A red panda, I think. Doesn't ring a bell. I don't recall any panda waiters. What's taking you so long? You want to switch places? From the back door, I can see a hall that might lead to the basement. Does that sound familiar? O'Leary sometimes comes from a hallway, but who knows if it's that one. Check out that graffiti. You're in On Leon Tong territory. Wow, I thought the Tong Wars had ended years ago. Maybe someone nostalgic just got bored. Damn Chinese mafias. Yeah, American mafias are infinitely better, no doubt. There's a trap door on the ground, right by the restaurant. Does that sound familiar? Huh? The, the restaurant or the trap door? Okay, forget it. I need you to go to the front door and ring the bell. All right, is there a bar in that alley? Have you been drinking? Count to 30, 
Ring the bell, then run for the car. Got it? Whoa, you better send a bunch of Natalia's my way after this. So, now what are you going to do? I'll open the door with my lockpicks. Once I'm in... I'm still not sure if I'll take the hall or the door on the right. Whoa, you better send a bunch of Natalia's my way after this. So, now what are you going to do? I'll open the door with my lockpicks. Once I'm in... I'm still not sure if I'll take the hall or the door on the right. The lock on that door was not your standard model. I had to give it my all. I was expecting some frozen bodies. Hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> A 
perguntar-lhe. Hmm. There's one on each table, except this one. The odds are incredibly in Stone's favor. I guess that he's the reigning champion, and Bobby Yale is just a contender, but maybe word got out about his condition. Does O'Leary have a network of pals? thingamajig that adds on its own. What'll they think of next? It looks like a summary of all the bets that come in. Day, amount, bet, wagerer. Wait a minute. Did O'Leary himself bet five grand on Yale? Sometimes I forget that criminals, even the office variety, have family and kids. Anyway, maybe things aren't so bad on the dark side. Sixteen days until the fight. Wow, I didn't realize you could place so many bets on a single baseball game. Could 
that be Ireland? The painting concealed file after file of celebrity reports with all sorts of shady information, ranging from S to Z. Almost all of them were athletes. Is that what O'Leary meant when he said that detectives and police officers were his friends? I wonder how many spy for him. If I were to pitch in, who would I spy on? In Bobby Yale's folder, all I found was a log of his incredible stats as an aspiring champion. 20 victories, 16 by knockout. Although, at the end of the report, someone had underlined one word several times. Untouchable. According to Stone's report, he was so clean, not to mention hard to corrupt, that O'Leary opted for a more subtle strategy. Apparently, when he broke up with the tennis player Helen Moore, he set her up with Stone. Lucky for him, they hit it off. As I put away the report, I stopped in my tracks. Did I really need to risk knowing what O'Leary had on my good friend? the incorruptible police commissioner? I sighed in relief. O'Leary had tried to buy Smirnoff on several occasions, but failed. Luckily, O'Leary had nothing on him, or me. Thorpe had been a rising football star before the war, which he came back from with honors and decorations. After the truce, he resumed his career. He won three season trophies and a couple of MVP awards. He retired after an accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. He started his own sports advertising agency four years ago, but according to the files, O'Leary hadn't even tried to corrupt him. I'd say that's Ireland, too. Limited edition copy two of three. We listen, if you call it listening, to the sentimental romance. Your eyes act like the moon. If they're not together anymore, why does O'Leary keep so many pictures of romantic moments with Helen Moore? Ireland, of course. This guy's obsessed.
I hope I never become the object of O'Leary's obsession. Luckily or not, files in through R included no one that I could somehow connect to the case. Strange as it may seem, the reports reveal that O'Leary had hired Jake as a bodyguard precisely because he was absolutely clean. Apparently, he liked to surround himself with honest people when he mingled with the high society. Helen Moore's file was, by far, one of the juiciest. She had been just a run-of-the-mill tennis player until O'Leary launched her career by rigging enough games to help her climb the ranking. However, O'Leary hadn't fixed any of her games in over a year. In spite of that, she remained undefeated. Be as it may, it was clear that O'Leary had enough information to ruin her career. <laughs> 